for the last portion of our online event, we will now proceed with the open forum and Q&A with our Kuha project team and Ms. Maria Irina Matorio of the DOST Technology Licensing Office as part of the panel. So before we proceed with our Q&A session, may we remind participants to type in their questions in the chat pane to be addressed by the speakers and moderators during the panel Q&A session. We're also encouraging everyone to share with us your respective contact details and media affiliations on the chat pane to get a copy of the official media release for this event. For those who are streaming this event via YouTube and Facebook Live, you may send us your questions to our resource speakers by typing them in the comment box. Our team will then be relaying them to the speakers during the Q&A portion. Now to join us as the moderator for this Q&A session is Mr. Fer John Painagan of the Kuha team. Thank you, Nicole. So we have a few questions coming from our audiences, from our live streams. And so to ask the first question, this is a question from Jasmine Romero of ABS-CBN. The question is, how can Kuha compete with the various apps in the market? How can DOST vet out photos when so many of them can be shared inaccurately? So anyone from the panel can answer the question. Again, the question is, how can Kuha compete with the various apps in the market? How can DOST vet out photos when so many of them can be shared inaccurately? Okay, um, first let me answer the question. No, that's a good question actually. Um, Kuha actually answers a different problem or pain point um, compared to other social media applications or photo sharing applications. Uh, primarily the, the goal of Kuha, as um, discussed earlier, um, is to create a niche for big data generation and also um, empowering the general public to contribute data to the scientific community. We're not just sharing um, photographs and some captions and um, or other medias to, um, to the public. And their goal is not to actually disrupt this technology because um, magkaiba yung, ano eh, yung pain point na ina-address. So yung goal is uh, to develop this um, social network of uh, citizen science, scientists, researchers, um, students uh, with the concept of sharing and mapping contribution of sensor data and um, making this as a medium for researchers to generate data out of the contributions. So the second question is, um, um, or how do we assess if uh, the data being um, contributed or shared by the public um, are really accurate? So we, we just uh, rely, we hi highly rely on the sensor data um, of the mobile devices and um, uh, smartphones. So at this point, uh, Android pa lang yung supported natin. We're still developing yung um, other uh, um, um, platforms for iOS. We're still considering that nasa pipeline namin. Pero um, in terms of the data being shared, uh, the latest phone models and known brands have um, quite accurate in, uh, inertial sensors. And particular, uh, particularly yung older ones na mga devices natin, um, they may deliver inaccurate sensors. We highly rely on the on the sensor data shared to the community. And um, ano lang naman siya straightforward that when you capture a photograph, it will automatically collect the sensor data and embeds it on the photograph. So yun yung difference lang din. Ina embed niya yung data sensor data to the photograph and then user can share it to the community, contribute it to the community. So, and I hope I answered the question, Bob. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Rox. So we have another question from, again, from Jasmine Romero. So how can DOST lure users to use a government app when some distrust the government? Aside from the promise to keep data safe, how can users feel safe? What is the guarantee that the data 
or info gathered will not be used against them? Well, that's actually a really a uh, tough question, no? Parang, and we really, really need to address yung privacy concerns and security ng users. So we have um, an established privacy pol policy in terms of use, wherein um, we provided sections for information collection and use, how we share and retain personal information and security. And also, um, KUHA does not disclose personal information uh, for the purpose of um, uh, eventually uh, sharing the, the data collected for research purposes. We do not disclose personal information. And also, you can refuse to supply, users can refuse to supply personal information, of course, with the caveat of um, yeah, not doing so much or may prevent you from services and activities uh, in the application. Uh, you can still use the app uh, without registering naman, but you cannot share it to the community. Um, so without providing your personal information, other than yeah, auto automatic naman provision of your IP address, you will still be able to access and use the PUHA application on a read-only basis. So also we implement reasonable and appropriate uh, physical, technical, and organizational measures to prevent the loss, destruction, uh, misuse, or alteration of users' information. Also, there's a data subject agreement during sign-up. Um, if a user wish to uh, delete their record uh, in the Kuha app, actually, we're currently um, developing the feature of deletion and the activation of um, user account. But um, in case uh, a data subject would wish to delete their record um, or destroy it or withdraw consent of processing any any information, personal information provided in the application, uh, you may contact uh, the OSTST, the Data Privacy Officer of the OSTST. It, it is also provided, the contact details are also provided in our uh, um, privacy policy and statements. So we'll keep your information for as long as necessary unless you request to delete or destroy. And we make sure that we do not disclose any personal information for the purpose of um, analysis or study. Anonymize lahat ng records natin for that purpose. Um, and also my consent ng user whenever they will provide a personal information in the application. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rock. So to anyone who has more questions regarding the privacy policy, or if you want to know more about it, so maybe uh, you can use, you can, I mean, you can read the privacy policy from the Kua app itself. Okay, so another question from Florentino. What's the acceptable file size of each of the data to be shared? Hello, good morning. Ayan. So, based on the current requirements na ginagawa ngayon ng team namin, based doon sa resolution ng camera, and then kapag nag-capture ng photo using the app, the app will save yung actual file size niya. So, it will also be uploaded based on its actual file size. Okay, thank you so much. So, we have another question. Uh, from Mr. Siegfried Laborte. So, paano po makukuha ng date-generated system? How accessible is the data and in what form the data is generated? Is it in CSV, spatial, statistical, or data set? Ayun, hello. So, with regards to how the data or how the researchers can access the data, Currently, we are still establishing the user base of the application to generate more data. But later on, data will be available via a secured API. Although we haven't arranged the formal procedures for how the data request or how the user can request the data yet, we are still in the stage where we're establishing users in data. So 
potentially interested stakeholders may send a request to the head of the agency and we'll update you once we are on this stage of the project. I hope I answered that question. All right, thank you, Kevin. Also, we have another question from our Facebook live stream. So, how do the app system handle bad or fake data? Okay. Um, ano, kailangan siguro mong explain ano yung bad or fake data. No? Parang, um, you cannot easily, you cannot actually share um, any other photograph um, captured by your uh, parang built-in camera application or other application. Parang before you can share photograph in the community, in the Kuha community, um, uh, it needs to be uh, captured using the camera application because it collects plurality of sensor data along the photograph. But um, just to um, ensure that the Kuha users can use the application and con contribute uh, data freely and safely and having this um, um, at least uh, a report system if there's a fake or uh, siguro, um, sensitive media uploaded to the application, we will establish a detailed community guidelines and rules to ensure Kuha users can use the application um, freely and safely and will provide the uh, no, uh, feature for, for reporting um, sensitive media shared to the community. Uh, it depends on the user who will report um, particular um, contribution or photograph or any data that a user contributed. So at the moment, um, some features are currently under development and will include this in our next release. Uh, the reporting feature, as mentioned by Mitch earlier. So in the meantime, the team will monitor all uh, contributions and check if there's a violation on, on our rules and community guidelines. Um, it will be, I think, um, deployed uh, within the first semester. Uh, this feature will be deployed within the first semester. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Rox. Yeah, thank you, Mom Rocks. Uh, also for answering the questions that were raised earlier. I think the questions from Mom Jasmine Romero also um addressed the question sent by Sir Siegfried uh regarding uh how we can encourage uh, our contributor community to um use the app as well as the question earlier from Mom Dems um on how who had draws the line between analyzing um the data for big data. So now we proceed to another question from Dems Angeles. Um, can you share the best practices or use case scenarios for PUHA contributors? Uh, also, we're uh, encouraging our guests, if you have any more questions, you can also uh, raise your hand via Zoom and also feel free to send them in our chat section. Um, again, the question from Dems, how can you share the best practices or use case scenarios for PUHA contributors? Okay, sige. Um, I don't know if I get the question correctly. No? Pero parang um, sa anong area or anong use case scenario where I will use the Kuha application. Um, well, uh, comparing it uh, with other ano, other photo sharing or social media applications, um, it seems na why will I contribute or why will I, I post my picture in Kuha where in there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, uh, malaki yung user base, um, and mas maraming, yan, maraming gumagamit, mas okay yung mga features nila. So, I think um, yung primary siguro na, ano, na use case is um, knowing that um, a, a contribution or a photograph and, sensor and, collect, um, and plurality of sensor data 
uh, collected by the application and shared to the community will somehow um, having an impact to the scientific community in the future or um, once we generated a um, large amount of data. So somehow um, the real-time participatory data collection um, aspect um, will, will encourage them to to actually um, have this um, you know, participation in the scientific community. And also we're trying to develop um, some features and to, to retain uh, the, user, the users and encourage them to contribute data. Um, as mentioned by Mitch earlier, we'll, we will be developing um, several features like gamification, um, giving awards and incentives, um, uh, badges, um, and also uh, we can also, um, yeah, the bragging rights on th these are your contributions to the community. Any instances in your life, you can just take a, uh, a snapshot or a photograph um, or your selfie, um, anything, nasa bahay ka, nasa labas ka. Because there are different measurements. Yun yung, ano, yun yung kagandahan niyo. Parang there are several measurements that we capture. Uh, and then, um, regardless kung nasaan ka, anong subject mo, um, may potential area of application. So, in a way, in a way, a user contributes to the, to the to the scientific community, even if they just share um, simple photograph. Kahit nasa bahay ka, nasa labas ka, we will capture the light, uh, the 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 sound, the noise level, um, the motion motion acceleration, um, gravity, pressure, uh, and other uh, data, other sensory data. So. I hope I somehow na nasagot ko yung tanong. I was able to answer the question. Okay, thank you, Mom um, Rocks. So evidently, there are so many use cases for the kuha especially on the data that's generated from the application. So in the future, hopefully there are, uh, there will be more R&Ds that can benefit from the application data. Okay, so for the next question, we have from Mr. Dems. So the question is, are there any upcoming initiatives or plans for contact tracing, disaster risk management, or the 2022 elections? Um, currently, because we're still establishing our user base, and um, when we say uh, big data, um, it's high volume, high velocity, um, high variety. So we're considering um, how big um, the data um, collected before we can infer or analyze. You can use it for analysis. So we're, we're talking about uh, thousands and gigabytes to petabytes of data contribution. Um, but eventually, um, if we will be able to generate a uh, um, big amount of data, a large data set out of the contributions by the users and community, yes, we can actually uh, use this data for, as an input um, for data analysis for this particular um, area. As, my, as I've mentioned during my presentation, we can use it, this data for environmental um, applications. In terms of COVID-related, well, for contact tracing, uh, well, COVID is here to stay. We can use the, utilize the sensor, cellular location, um, historical data of your phone. If you contribute data to the PUHA, uh, um, we capture the location of a particular uh, contribution. And, but again, um, it may be limited. It depends if the user will share the data or allow the use of location services. Um, yes, we can use this data for these purposes given that we have established 
um, large data set and um, we have um, um, we have this consistent user base to contribute data. So we're considering uh, the volume, the velocity, and the variety of data before we can use this um, this for uh, data analysis and diagnostic analytics. All right, thank you, Mom Rox. And if I may add, uh, despite the promising uh, data that KUHA can generate, it also uh, is also bound for certain types of limitations, especially on the types of data that are being submitted by the users. So hopefully, uh, this media launch will uh, further connect KUHA app with, uh, with the certain agencies, especially the different agencies in the Philippines, so that uh, we can generate we can generate more data for certain R&D, especially if we try to uh, uh, generate data for agriculture, we can, uh, we, can we, uh, we encourage a partnership with the Department of Agrarian Reform or with different agriculture sector, and also with technologies, the OTR, and furthermore, different agencies that are, can benefit from the data generated from the KUHA. Okay, so, Another question. So this is another question from Mr. Dems. So you mentioned that KUHA can be used for tourism in terms of analyzing mobile signal strength. Will this be cross-checked with project BASS or project based crowdsourcing mobile app that monitors bandwidth provided by telco companies and other ISPs? Yes, that, that, that is actually a good input. We can cross-check um, the analysis or the result of diagnostic analytics in um, KUHA against other projects. So essentially, we collect um, the network signal, uh, kung ano yung SIM card na naka-insert sa mga mobile phones natin, we collect this data. And then, um, we, we can check um, for, for the telecommunication, as I mentioned earlier on my um, presentation, um, this data can be used by telco industries to identify areas with weak, weak signal reception. And again, we just rely, we highly rely on the sensor uh, data of our mobile devices. And again, there are parameters that needs to be considered kung bago ba yung um, sensors ng phone, especially kung luma na yung phone natin, it may uh, vary, um, mag, mag vary yung, ano, yung uh, measurements. So we're considering considering all these parameters when uh, when we will analyze data in the future. And it's good to know na ano may mga ganong uh, uh, may mga ganitong projects like in project based na we can cross check um, uh, this uh, the result um, against the result for um, better in ano, um, inference and um, result. So, yeah. So good, ano yun, Good um, input for data analysis in the future. We can cross check. Hi, okay, thank you, Miss Rocks. So apparently, Project Base is a DOSD back project as well, and. We're sorry pala po, uh, it's Miss Poo pala and not Mr. Dems. Okay, sorry po. Okay, moving on. We have another question from Antonio Salceda from the Philippines Post News today. So this question is related to another question from Nez Aguilar of the Philippine Event News. So what are the other features that Kuha without the other app? So Related to this one is what is the advantages and disadvantages of KUHA as an app? The Philippines, okay, that's the question. Ferge, I think this question has been answered already earlier. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Michelle. Okay, so moving on, we have another question from Mr. Owen Lagunday. So the first question is, in general, 
what necessitated the creation of kuha? Is it to respond to a vacuum out of social behavior or pattern? Again, the question is, what necessitated the creation of kuha? Is it to respond to a vacuum out of social behavior or pattern? Well, that is actually one area of application, but um, we're aiming, we're actually, initially, we're aiming to um, create this um, niche for big data generation, an avenue for big data generation. And eventually, this data can be used to generate new knowledge um, or develop new applications. Well, um, considering the new, um, um, when we have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, na we have generated enough um, or big data set. So, well, that's another. Uh, that's just an example of um, an area of application where we can use uh, uh, the data. So we can use this for research purposes. Um, we can infer general public's behavior or preferences, association. Well, for the purpose of improving public services. Well, in general, the goal is um, for the user to contribute data and use this data for um, um, applicable, applica applicable areas of, of applications, as I've mentioned earlier, in the area of telco, business, um, uh, tourism, education, and even for policy makers and decision makers, health, um, education, etc. So, Thank you so much, Ms. Rox. Another question from Mr. Owen. For TLO, would the government through DOST maintain ownership of KUHA? What is the IP plan for that? Again, would the government through DOST maintain ownership of KUHA? What is the IP plan for that? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, KUHA has um, an IP applied, uh, has a patent applied, trademark, and copyrights. And uh, it, it, the, the government is looking for licensees who would like to adopt the technology. And in particular, we are looking into investors who are into Internet of Things, uh, software applications, and other related um, technologies. So the IP is still with the government, of course, but in order for KUHA to be fully utilized by the people, we want to partner with the industry in terms of um, opening this application for potential business. Thank you, Ms. Maria Irene Amatorio, for answering your question. And for our last question, I think. So from Ms. From Zaruba Zaragoza, can the data generated or collected by KUHA be downloaded so that the researchers can use it in their studies? Example, if you want to have an audit of a particular topic or object, can we download them? So this question is related also to Ms. to Siegfried Laborte's question on how are data generated and validated. And actually, the web application version of KUHA is designed for sharing the data of KUHA to interested parties. The filtering functionalities is designed for filtering data to be downloaded based on the available sensor data. So, you name subject niya. So, based on the sensor data that KUHA is collecting, like yung luminance, temperature, location. Then, as mentioned earlier with my presentation, that feature, the filter feature, is currently being enhanced by our team. And also, we are developing APIs for external users to request for data from KUHA. But the mechanism on how to request, we're still planning how 
interested parties can request for data of KUHA. I hope I answered the question. Thank you. If I may add um, also first uh, to the question. Um, I, I think this was answered by Kevin earlier. No? But uh, we're establishing um, the user base of the application um, and we're still generating data. But eventually, um, we, we will be having this formal procedure on how to request available data for research studies or uh, for other purposes, for an data analytics. Um, but potentially, uh, yeah, stakeholders, interested stakeholders, academe, uh, research institution may send a request to the head of the agency, uh, write a letter of request. But we'll update you once we are on the stage of the project. Thank you so much, Ms. Rox and Ms. Michelle for answering the question. So this is the last question we can accommodate from the Facebook page. We apologize for not being able to answer them all. Rest assured that you can send your questions to corecom at asti.gov.ph and we'll answer them as much as we can. So the last question is, can internet speed be integrated in KUHA's backend? Um, what do you mean? Internet, internet speed? Ah, yeah. Um, when we um, measure yung speed ng upload and download, right? Uh, ito yung tinutukoy. Sige. Well, actually, mabilis kasi yung capture ng, ano, ng, ng, ng sensor data. Parang, uh, we read it as is. I think, in a matter of seconds, we can read it. Pero yung pagbasa kasi ng internet speed, it will take some time. Depende pa kung uh, gaano kabilis mag-respond din yung machine mo at the same time yung uh, yung ano yung application na, na, na ginagamit mo to run it. Um, well, we have this I think application in ASTI where we I think the, the NetMesh project has this uh, application na nag uh, nag may measure din ng internet speed. We actually um, have this initial conversation with them. We can run this on the background, pero at the moment, um, hindi pa namin kasi makita yung, ano, um, yung um, use niya. And we haven't um, entertained this uh, feature yet. Potentially, um, we can integrate this, pero magra-run sa background yung, ano, eh, yung, yung pagbasa ng, ano, ng data, upload and download rate ng isang... Um, ng, 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 ng ISP or ng network provider. Uh, mabilis kasi si Kuha, like, ano lang, in a matter of seconds, you can get the measurement. Siguro ito yung magiging gap, but uh, we can discuss this. I think, um, since the OSD asked rin yata yung, ano, um, yung same team na gumawa nito, we can actually uh, um, integrate uh, to have um, a richer content or data na pwedeng makolet through the application. Right. Thank you so much, Ms. Rox. And apologies, uh, you can send your questions at info at asti.gov.ph instead. So we'll flash the email later. And I think that would be all for the questions. So this is more like a comment and suggestion from Al Vitangkol. The speaker defined big data as large data sets that may be analyzed computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. This is correct. However, why is DOST interested in such human behavior and interactions? I believe DOST should be concerned with the science aspect of the collected data. All of the stuff discussed are motherhood statements. I'm looking for specific scientific applications that can be derived from such big data. For example, the collected data on ambient temperature can be used to do thermal mapping and eventually be used in relation to climate change and global warming. So thank you so much, Mr. Al Vitangkol. We appreciate this comment and rest assured that it could be better from here on. And another comment. Disclosure of location of contributors or the photos shared is somewhat violative of an individual's privacy. 
This should be disclosed only if the user agreed to its public disclosure. Hence, our privacy policy statement, just like what was stated earlier, everything is anonymized. So I think that would be all. Thank you so much for the questions and the comments. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, also thank you to all our uh, participants for sharing their questions, all of our participants from uh, the media, as well as our guests from uh, our Facebook and YouTube live stream. So unfortunately, we don't have much time to answer all the questions during this live stream. But if you do want to know more about the Kuha mobile and web app, please message us through the DOSD ASC or the Kuha Facebook page or through our communications unit or via email as mentioned by per earlier at uh, info at ascii.bosd.gov.ph and anyone from the Kuha team will try to answer them.